Welcome to Cooking with Bobby Joe. There is not going to be any cooking going on today, but we will show you our new kitchen and our new home. I'm going to tell y'all up front that I am still struggling with post-COVID syndrome, so I had to write out what I want to say in this video. Hopefully I can read through it without messing up the words too much. I will go back and edit what I mess up. So this is our new home. It belonged to my husband's parents. They moved out of this home and into a single level home about five or six years ago. So it's been unoccupied since then. Steve grew up here. Well, he was about 10 years old when they moved here. We had talked about buying this house, fixing it up and moving into it for a while. We liked that it was closer to everything, closer to his parents if they needed anything and also had a very large yard for the dogs. It has a very nice large corner lot. We planned on having time to fix it up before we moved in. That was before I got COVID. We never expected COVID to do what it has done to me physically, and I don't know what it's done to my brain, but it's done something to my brain. Once I realized I had post-COVID syndrome and wasn't sure how long I would be out of work, we decided we needed to speed up the process of fixing the house. The main thing that needed to be repaired in this house was the kitchen. Steve's dad had the water leak in the kitchen fixed and also had a new hot water heater installed in the basement, which was a real blessing. We decided to put a rush on fixing the kitchen floor and getting moved in so we could sell our other house while the market was good. It has taken longer than we had expected, but we are getting there. Hopefully in the next week or so, we will have it on the market. Another thing that had to be done before moving in was fencing in the yard. We got several estimates, but we decided we were not going to fence in the entire yard because we could not afford that. So we just went from each corner of the house back. Plus, I wanted to put my gardens outside of the fence. That way I didn't have to worry about the dogs digging up my plants because we do have some dogs that love to dig. So I'm going to start by showing the before photos. The kitchen had a rotted floor that needed to be replaced and we thought it was going to be a simple project where we just replace the floor, pull out the old appliances, replace them with new ones and then we're done. Wrong! Nothing is ever that simple. There was a water leak. I believe it was at the sink or dishwasher, I can't remember, but like I said, his dad had that water leak fixed, but the floor was rotted in front of the sink and the dishwasher. My dad and brother helped with this project. My dad came up to see if he was able to do the project, so he had to pull out all the old appliances so he could see the damage underneath. These are the original appliances that came with the house. The house was built in 1963. Steve's dad had purchased new appliances for the kitchen before they decided to move into a different home, so we were fortunate that he did this because we did not have to purchase appliances since they were still in the box in the garage. We were very thankful for that. The cabinets needed to be pulled out so the floor could be replaced under them, so my brother got enlisted to help with the job. Lucky him. <laughs> Those cabinets took a lot of manpower to pull out and once everything was pulled out the floor was basically falling apart underneath and it was just falling to the, into the basement below. We had a lot of old floor to clean up down there once they were done. They also cut out the wall behind where the sink and dishwasher were. We had to clean up everything, sprayed mold cleaner and placed it with new sheetrock so it looks like brand new back there. My dad and brother would come up on the weekend to work on it and they will never know how much we appreciated all their time and labor. During the week, I would spend what little energy I had painting. We put a mattress on the bedroom floor so I had a place to nap if I decided to come over here and work. I was sticking with the same colors that I had at the other house, although the yellow is a pale yellow instead of a bright yellow like I had in my other kitchen. I like the pale yellow. Um, I wanted a, something just a little bit brighter, but this, this looks really good. If you haven't noticed, I do like bright, cheery colors. So I washed all the cabinets, the doors, and the hardware, and then I painted the cabinets white and the hardware blue. I painted the walls yellow. The cabinet the stove top used to be in is now the cabinet the sink is in. The cabinet the sink was originally in had too much water damage. If I had money, I would have redone the entire kitchen with new cabinets and a wraparound counter, but with me not working, we had no extra money. We used what we had on hand to put together a new kitchen the best we could. Now the next issue came with the new stove. The electrical wiring was not able to handle the new stove. 
We ended up having to get an electrician to rewire and also put in a new pole on the side of the house and a new breaker box. Steve picked out some cheap vinyl flooring at Home Depot. It was the cheapest they had and I did not like it to start with. After it was down, it looked a lot better than I thought it would. It really brightened it up and it's really grown on me. We also had to buy a new counter. We got this one at Southeastern Salvage along with the sink. The old counter was custom made with the house. It was a lot wider than this counter, therefore the old sink was too big for it. So Steve went searching for a smaller sink and he found this deep sink that I love. Okay, so now I will show you a video tour of the finished product. The one thing that annoyed me was that the sink was not centered under the window anymore because we had to use the cabinet the old sto stove top used to be in. It was a different size than the cabinet that was originally here. Therefore, we had to make it work the best we could and that required my sink not being centered with the window. I'm over it now, but to start with, it drove me crazy. Also, we had no cabinet to go under the end of the counter. I'm not sure if even a custom made cabinet would work down there because it's just such a small space between the stove and the counter. I put up a curtain and I just store bottled water and dog food under there. It's a good storage area for overstock. This cabinet did have drawers in it when the stove top was in it so you had some storage space for utensils and such. But since it now has a sink in it we could not use the drawers because the sink is in the way. So I took the fronts off of the drawers and I just nailed them on to make it look like there are drawers there. This is the cabinet the old oven was in. I just use it to store my glass storage containers and eventually we will put a shelf in it so we will be able to store other things above. Um, but right now we just use it for storage for the glass storage containers. And this is all the cabinet space that we have. It's a lot less than the other house so we had to come up with some other ways to store things. There's a lot of furniture in the dining room that has a lot of storage in it so we use that for storage. I love the big window sills in this house. I transplanted all of my herbs and house plants into smaller containers or into window boxes so I would have room for them in these window sills. This is oregano. It's about three years old. I prefer fresh oregano when I'm cooking, but it grows so fast I have to keep cutting it back, so I dry it out. Um, that way I have a dried oregano as well. And then this is my Berkey. It also fits perfectly on the corner of the sink. Oh, and the faucet my mom got. When Steve got the sink, it did not have a hole cut out for the sprayer nozzle, which we would have eventually cut it out and had it installed, but my mom bought this for us and it has a built-in sprayer. That way we didn't have to worry about cutting a hole in the sink. The backsplash I also scrubbed and painted the bright blue to match everything else in the kitchen. The old fan behind the stove works but it's loud and I don't use it because I'm not sure how safe it is since it is over 55 years old. We will eventually get a stove hood to go under the cabinet above the stove. Okay, so the other side of the kitchen has my pot racks, my cast iron rack, our chest freezer, baker's rack, tables. The freezer is in front of what used to be the doorway to the dining room, but we turned the old den into a dining room and then the old dining room into a library. That's the back of a bookshelf blocking the doorway. I will show you that in a moment. We put tables on this wall so we would have more counter like space plus with tables I can sit down while I work which is helpful right now. On the wall in the dining room I have a cart with the dog's crop pot. That is the dog's feeding station. Yes our dogs have their own crop pot of food. I make a soupy chicken and rice or beef liver and rice or sometimes chicken liver and rice and I pour a scoop over their dry food. We have no issues getting them to eat their food anymore. Yes they are spoiled but we love our dogs. Then I have my juicing table with my lighthouse window pane above. That's St. Joseph's Lighthouse in Michigan. My sister and I took a lighthouse trip down the coast of Lake Michigan and I got some great photos and this is one of them. Okay, so this is the dining room. Um, that's the china cabinet my mom gave me a few years ago. I always used it for storage, you know, my fancy dinnerware like paper plates and plastic cups. <laughs> I've got all my special occasion glassware and knickknacks in there now. And this used to be a coat closet when it was a den, but we turned it into a pantry. I will come back to that in a moment. And like I said, I just finished transplanting all my house plants into smaller containers, containers. So I have them hanging around the dining room and in the window sills. 
had some plants that were too big uh, to put in window sills. I have a 23 year old Christmas cactus and it is its original root is just too big for any small pot. I also separated my big aloe plant into three separate planters and I planted my rosemary and thyme in a small window box. Still have a big pot of basil I need to transplant. It's in the sunroom at the other house. I will get to it this week hopefully. I love sitting in the dining room and watching the birds on the bird feeders and I have my Birds of Tennessee book so if I see one that I don't know I can look it up. I know most of the Georgia birds and a lot of the same birds are here in Tennessee since we are so close to Georgia anyway. And there are a few different ones but I haven't seen those yet so hopefully I will see some in the springtime. This house has big windows all the way through it which I absolutely love. I see here in the morning, I do my daily quiet time with the Lord. I can also see the dogs playing in the backyard from up here. The dining room is probably my favorite spot in the house. Okay, so this used to be a coat closet, but we turned it into a pantry. These two top shelves were already here and the bar, but I painted the bar to match the kitchen, and then Steve put the rest of the shelves all the way down. So there are, there's plenty of storage in here. Okay, let's go check out the crowded library. We are still in the process of unpacking, but we are running out of room very quickly. The dogs, they're stuck behind the doggy gate because I have the covers for the couch and the washer. I don't let them on the sectional unless it's covered. Our neighbors over at our other house was giving away this awesome sectional and we are so thankful that we were able to get it from them. I was looking for a new used couch. I never buy new furniture because we have four indoor, indoor dogs and there's no reason to waste money on new furniture. Actually, even before I had four indoor dogs, I've never been a new furniture type of person. I always wait for a family member to give stuff away and then I take it if I need it. But this is probably the nicest free couch I've ever had. We love it and the dogs love it, so we're very thankful that they gave it to us. There is plenty of room for the dogs to stretch out around me, and I will post a video at the end of them stretched out. In here is the library. We have to keep it blocked off because we have one dog that will ruin a good book. I plan on putting barn doors or some sort of doors up here to block it off. That way it will look better than this big wooden crate door that's hard for me to move, but it will work for now. So this is the library. It has bookshelves and DVD shelves all the way around. Most of these books are Steve's, imagine that. He has every baseball book known to man. We have all the DVDs, VHS tapes, yes, VHS, VHS tapes, <laughs> those still exist, and games in here as well. We have a table set up in the middle to play games and I sit here with my laptop editing videos. When I need a break from the dogs, I can lock myself in here. The problem is that it's almost full, there's no space left, and we still have a lot of books at the other house to move over here. I have two bookshelves that are empty in my office that hopefully will fit most of the books. I doubt it, but we're, we're going to be hopeful about it. Apparently there's some kind of special rule that you can't give away books that you've already read. You can only loan them out, but once you purchase them, they're a part of your library forever think I'm joking you should see all the books around here from Steve's childhood well there you have it I hope you enjoyed the tour of the kitchen and part of our new home I'm proud of what I was able to accomplish in this house over the past five months it takes me a lot longer than it used to but I keep doing as much as I can each day I'd like to thank Steve's parents my parents my brother Steve's brother Danny and friend Lamville for all of their help while we've been going through a difficult time since since COVID we appreciate everything they've done. Most importantly, I like to thank the good Lord above because there have been times we had no idea how we would make the bills and the money would just show up in unexpected ways. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Okay, I'm going to have to go listen to that song now. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up on YouTube. It will be in your head all day long. 
If you want to keep up with the updates on my health and post-COVID syndrome, check out my blog. That is where I update, but there hasn't been much new to update except I quit with doctors and their prescriptions. Tomorrow will be 200 days since I tested positive for COVID, so I, I may rant on my blog tomorrow. Y'all don't pay too much attention to me because I view all of this a lot different than most people going through it. I'm sure if I did rant, a true rant, I would offend a lot of sensitive people, so I try to hold back on what I say. Okay, on that note, I'm going to go listen to that song. I will leave a link in the video description if you want to listen to it. Y'all have a blessed week. If the good Lord's willing and the creek don't rise, I will be back next week with cooking videos. My sister and I did a video of some very unhealthy cookies that I need to share with y'all. Bye for now.